online teaching during the pandemic lessons from Northwood University by Mr. Mahbubul Haq Sharkar, Director Information Technology, NSC Udhaka. Bridging the Digital Divide for SDG4 by Mr. Normalullah Bahar, President SDG Youth Forum of Bangladesh. The Role of IT and Mobile Hardware for Online Education, a Student's Perspective by Mr. Hasin Shahid Shad, student of CSC Department of North South University. Now I would like to hand over the floor to the chair of the session, Professor Dr. Abdul Hanan Choudhury to moderate the session. Sir. Yes, good afternoon. Um, esteemed guests in our program today, the organizer of the event, the SIPG, and also CAS from Germany, Konrad Edinier Stiftan. Um, I must say that, well, thank you very much, uh, you know, CAS team from Germany, those who have actually participating with North South University SIPG and uh, organizing such a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, virtual national seminar on accelerating progress and equity in education during the pandemic in Bangladesh. Uh, this has been a, a great uh, sessions. Uh, actually, we have been observing over the last two days at North South University. And out of uh, many sessions today, we are actually here at the session number four that I am going to actually take part of the session chair. The topic and the title of the session is New Actors in Education. I must uh, thank the, you know, Dr. Tofik and Mahabub, uh, you know, uh, you know, from uh, SIPG and the team of the SIPG and uh, CAS team for even giving me the opportunity to actually chair this session. Uh, today, uh, we will have a STEAM team of presenters. They are actually going to uh, present for a few minutes in, and sharing their experience. I would like to name them first, and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about the uh, session that we are organizing today in this uh, you know, era of pandemic. Okay. Uh, we do have with us uh, esteemed panelist uh, speaker, Mr. Mohammad Taurit, the CEO of BDN. We have our another panelist, very esteemed uh, director of MI, you know, information technology, uh, Mahabubul Hawk Sharkar of North South University. Along with us, we do have a speaker, Mr. Numanullah Bahar, President HDG Youth Forum of Bangladesh. And finally, our beloved student, student of CSC department, Mr. Haseen Shahid Shad. I am actually welcoming you all in this session. And uh, I must again say that, well, thank you very much for giving us time and participating in this session. Dear audience, uh, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has provided Bangladesh education and academic sector a leeway to a paradigm shift in terms of academics, learning, and knowledge dissemination. The status quo has transformed tremendously in the past couple of years, and there will be implementation of modified rigorous channels through which academics and education will get better limelight. The current situation has transformed into an interconnected online arena where students, faculty bodies, and academicians have shifted to the new normal, the work from home culture, where there is a vast dependency on online learning, meeting and communicating system. This has made education and our uh, you know, content easier to access with campaigns and educational programs are being expedited through these distance means. However, the dependency on technology brought an adverse effect on the underprivileged, with many uh, people in Bangladesh not being able to uh, access uh, the resources, access the technology, and access the support that we are providing from the academic institution. They are uh, kind of deprived. So, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, you know, deprived people not having proper internet connections and technologies for online educational practices, this has created a 
uh, division within the within the uh, a digital divide has been created within the country. In the virtual future, the inclusion of a new technologies like uh, anti-cheating software and learning management system improves the standard of education further. I think the esteemed speaker they are going to talk about the uh, pros and cons of using technology in terms of disseminating knowledge uh, from you know from an academic institution's point of view, where we are always involved in face-to-face -face interaction, face-to-face -face classroom interactions now that we are trying to actually deliver anything and everything uh, you know, from distance. So there will be more access to resources for students who cannot visit the physical libraries anymore and subsidized internet packages and student loans for buying devices to help with other ongoing education many other things that we really need to adopt in terms of policy making. So, uh, you know, the shift of academic activities online has resulted in more significant challenges, you know, concerning the workload on institutions, their students and teachers. I would like to hear from the STEAM panelists today. At this moment, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Mohammad Taurit, the CEO of BDN. CEO of BDN, uh, you know, he is actually widely experienced in technology front and also uh, involved in uh, during pandemic. Uh, BDN has actually supported almost all the high learning institutions of our country through Zoom connectivity and also giving the technology platform to disseminate knowledge. So let us try to hear from Mohammad Taurit. Well, as a new actors in education, while we all have been actually, uh, you know, observing the pandemic, a sustained pandemic that is going on over the years. So welcome Mr. Mohammad Taurid at the very beginning to hear from him and let us try to uh, hear his experience. Thank you, Mr. Taurid. Thank you, sir, for introducing me and Bidiran as well. Can I share my screen, sir? Sure. Is it visible, sir? I yes, think. it is visible. Okay, sir. And uh, you may be a little bit loud, as otherwise fine. Definitely, I will. So thanks for having me on this seminar on accelerating progress and equity in education during the pandemic in Bangladesh. And my topic today is role of technology in providing online teaching in Bangladesh, prospects and challenges, lessons from Bidiran. So I don't need to introduce myself. Already I have been introduced by Honorable Professor Abdul Hannan. So a little bit snapshot on BDN, what BDN does. Actually BDN is providing data services and computer application services to all the universities in Bangladesh and also the a few of the research institutes, a few of the medical colleges. It was established under HECAP, we all know, the Higher Education Quality Enhancement Project, a project that was initiated by Ministry of Education and it was implemented by University Grants Commission. And BDN is connecting the institutions to global research and education network and also facilitating research and collaboration. At the moment, in total, BDN has 76 connectivity. That means optical fiber connectivity up to the premises of all those universities and medical colleges. The connectivity is dominated, of course, by the universities. Almost all the public universities and a few of the private universities are also connected. North South University is one of the private universities, which was connected long time before. And we have 181 members under our jurisdiction. So there is a difference of 105 between the number of members and number of connectivity. You will understand why the 105 members, what the other 105 members are doing without the connectivity, okay? So impact of COVID-19, yes, it was a disaster. Everybody knows it. If we see the roadmap, the first COVID detection was on March 8th. Then March 16, all the institutions 
were declared closed by Ministry of Education. And then on March 19, UGC approved online education on principle. And on March 23, we started providing the support services using Zoom application free of cost. So definitely COVID-19 strikes with a thunder and all the institutions got closed. The internet traffic plummeted, research traffic also came down. You can see from this chart that the internet traffic became almost one third, research traffic became almost one tenth. So the other day I was looking at a newspaper. So one advertisement, it attracted me. It was written like this, disruption is simultaneously the greatest threat and the biggest opportunity for any business. Definitely disruption was there because of COVID-19, but what were the opportunities? If we see once the institutions got closed, UGC started on principle, UGC allowed the institutes to go ahead with online courses, demand for video collaboration software, it surged, and we had 5,000 Zoom licenses that was delivered by Nordunet. Nordunet is the regional research and education network in Nordic countries. They gave us 5,000 Zoom licenses under a different project. So we immediately started distributing those 5,000 licenses to our distinguished faculty members. So was it the end of it? It was not. There were initial challenges. What were these, those challenges? We started getting warning from Nordonet because there, all the meetings, the faculties were creating, it, they were being created at the Nordonet data center. So their data center started getting choked. So they came to us and they started complaining that you cannot use these licenses on production mode. So what we could do. Also the available licenses was not enough, were not enough. Why? Because we have more than 35,000 faculty members to take care of. We had only 5,000 licenses. And also the license users, they started complaining that they need to get adequate amount of reports. So in that very moment, a big discovery came from Lanka Research and Education Network. What they came with, came up with? They came up with the concept of on-prem mode of using Zoom licenses. What is the beauty of using on-prem mode of licenses? In on-prem mode, all the meetings will be created in the local data center. That means if we use on-prem mode of licensing, all the meetings will be created in BDN data center. So Nordonet data center will not get any load out of it, only the other than the software licensing issue. So what was the result? Nordunet was very much convinced and they allowed us to use these licenses in production mode. And the outcome was even more favorable. They allocated 2,500 more licenses. So we got 7,500 licenses. But was it enough? That was not also enough. And the, what was the outcome? So institution grabbed the solution with open heart and the result you can see that 1.5 million meetings up to June 2021 and the monthly meeting peak was 138,000. That means around 5,000 meetings a day. So it was really a promising note. If you see in terms of number of students, participants, 80 million participants in last one and a half year, I will say. Total hour in terms of duration was 1.8 million hours of classes that were held. So there was a surge in our internet exchange traffic because all the meetings were being created in the local data center. So the users, they didn't need whichever ISP they were joining from, they didn't need to travel to internet. They were getting all the data locally. So our internet exchange traffic surged 
high. You can see that almost 50 times, 231 to 1.231 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz, almost 100 times. Then what were the additional challenges? If we look at it, you see that, as I have mentioned, that we had more than 20,000 faculty members to take care of. We had only 7,500 licenses. So that was the first limitation we faced. We started on-prem licenses. So now, instead of Nordonet hardware getting choked, Bidden and hardware started crunching and the surge in IX traffic that we needed to handle. In that moment, a big invention came from my software team. What they came up with? They came up with a software. Let us see what is the traditional uses of Zoom licenses. Normally, each faculty members need to have a license to create a meeting. So in that mode, the efficiency is not good enough because the faculty members, they don't create meetings all the time. So in this mode of connectivity, the efficiency is less than 10%. What we came up with, we came up with a magic box in the middle. So the faculty members were not handed over with direct Zoom account. They were handed over an account from this magic box. They used to log in to our magic box and then the magic box created the responsibility to create Zoom meetings for them. In this mode, we need as many Zoom accounts as we have number of simultaneous meetings. So we could rose the efficiency to almost 100%. So that was the biggest development and that was the magic, the magic box helped us to cater more than 20,000 faculty members with these 7,500 licenses. What was the, the flip side was as the meetings were created in Bidrian data center, the data center started crunching as I have already mentioned. On June 2020, we had around 50,000 participants at a single point of time. We needed 150 machines around, 150 virtual machines to take care of all those 50,000 participants but we had 200 virtual machines available in our data center. So that was not a challenge. But what was our forecast? That sooner the number of meetings will rise up to 2000. Then we would have needed another, not another, in total 280 virtual machines, but we had 200. So there was a gap. And the question came how to address the, that gap. There were two solutions came up. One was long-term solution, that is procurement of new servers. And there were short-term solutions. Long-term solutions will take some time, but we didn't have that much time. We could stagger the classes or we could request the universities to stagger classes. That was our initial proposal, but UGC didn't allow it. We could rent servers, but that involved cost. We were providing the services free of cost. So what we did, we went for procurement of new servers, but as that would have needed some time, we at the same time went for adaptation of software. We replaced all our VMware, world-class VMware software with Proxmox, which was an open source virtualization software. And the result or the outcome was excellent. So we could manage even 100,000 meetings at a time with our data center capacity. And you can see a surge in number of meetings in the month of January, because we could finish our procurement in December 2020, so that we could configure all those machines and the machine capacity rose to one zero to seven gigahertz from 624 gigahertz, even though the utilization was around 68%. The memory, it rose from 2.3 terabyte to 3.3 terabyte, and the utilization rose to 
Then we tried to identify some of the challenges that were being faced by the user community. So who were our users? The students and faculty members. So what were the challenges the students started facing? In a survey, we found out that 76% of the students, they use the mobile network. And what were the challenges they were mentioning? So they came up with two critical challenges that one was last mile connectivity. So that actually is the responsibility of the telecom operators. I would have appreciated if Yasir Razman Bhai was there, he could explain something about how they could take care of the last mile connectivity problem. But in terms of internet cost, we made some revolutionary, we took some revolutionary steps. The milestones, what were the milestones? We requested all the mobile operators that since it is only intranet traffic for education purpose, you can offer these services for this data free of cost. But pathetically enough, no operator came up with accepting our offer other than Teletalk. The Teletalk, the national telecom operator, they offered packages for Zoom licenses or Zoom users who will be using our education platform free of cost data services. But thanks to other operators, they came up with a cost which was 70% lower than their normal data cost. And what we did about availability of devices, we found that many of the students, they don't have smart devices, 2.59% of the students. So what UGC did in terms of that, UGC offered 41,501 students Taka 8,000 interest-free loan, which could enable the poor students buy a smart device to participate in the online classes. Now, what is Bidirans roadmap? As Professor Hannan Sar has already mentioned, we are planning to provide customized elements and combined it with Zoom. Also, we are thinking for the sustainability of the provided solution. Nordonet is kind enough to increase the licenses by another 7,500 that I didn't include in my presentation. So it is around 15,000 at the moment, but we need a sustainable solution. Nordonet is not going to provide these licenses for good. So we need to establish a relationship with Zoom application or Zoom provider. And the new normal, yes, we do believe that blended mode of pedagogy is the future in terms of education. We have to adapt that blended mode of pedagogy. The main challenge that I found is the attitude. We have to change the attitude, both of the students and of the faculty members. The faculty members need to adopt this technology and need to actually change their presentation and mode of delivery. Otherwise, it will not be adaptable or it will not be efficient or it will not be acceptable by the students. So this is the ex expected new normal, what we are thinking. And NRENS, the National Research and Education Network, needs to play its due role by providing the services of making this in order to make this happen. And that is our duty. And that is the opportunity that we are blessed with. And my point is we should not let this opportunity go away again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammad Taurit. Uh, you know, uh, we are going to come back with questions. If anybody has any question at the end, but thank you very much for giving us a brief snapshot about how uh, Zoom has been provided through the DBDN and how you have been able to help Bangladesh in regards to facilitating those things and also your contribution in terms of even the magic box, the way you have explained. I'll be going to uh, the you. next speaker. Next speaker is our esteemed director of the uh, you know, IT of North South University, Mr. Mahabubul Hawk Sharkar. He is going to uh, present online teaching during the pandemic lessons from North South University. 
Mr. Mahabub, uh, you actually understand very clearly the shift of academic activities on, you know, online has resulted in many more challenges concerning the workload of, of the institutions and also the workload of the students and also teachers. And in the flip side, the students on, you know, teaching online has a open the door to several opportunities involving technical innovation. Uh, you know, you have uh, shown us that well, how North South University is operating, you know, flawlessly uh, running operations for our 25,000 students approximately. Share your experience and tell us your challenges that what you have been actually going through. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, I'm really humbled for giving me this opportunity and uh, I'm delighted that I'll be able to share some of our experience um, um, with our online effort. Honorable Session Chair, Professor Abdul Hanan Choudhury, distinguished guests and speakers, and those who are um, listening or checking online. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon. I would like to really share a small um, um, document, if you just allow me a little bit. So introducing online class in NSU, this is actually my topic that I would like to re really share my experience. I will just go through one by one and uh, I will be really, I'd be happy to take any questions afterwards. So nationwide lockdown begins. It's March the 16, 2020, last year. And uh, we had actually two weeks prior to the official lockdown. And I'm just trying to actually give you a little bit of context where we were, where we were and how actually we have gone through. COVID-19 was raging across the globe and it, countries after countries were facing complete lockdown. It was just a matter of time when we know that the virus is going to really hit our shores. Possibility of complete lockdown looms large and it was, it was getting streamed everywhere in the electronic media and in the print media everywhere. And ECU administration is having meeting after meeting how to really handle it. The idea of online class was really getting traction at the time and then, then, then ever before. And we are contemplating how to really uh, see and, and where is our capacity. So two weeks to lockdown continues. NSU has been using, by the way, a homegrown online exam solution for, for our SIPG department since 2017. It's online exam system. But the scale and the intensity was nothing compared to what we are about to face. Our initial assessment revealed that the Google virtual classroom is the shortest possible path for us to introduce online class to a mass scale. NSU, by the way, is one of the very few institutions around adopting Google G Suite in the year 2015 for free. By the way, if any institutions who wants to really get Google G Suite at this moment, and if they have more than 10,000 employee or actually student, they need to pay a premium price. For a proof of concept, at the time, the last two weeks of the actually uh, to begin the to begin the lockdown, we conducted a live demo in the presence of all academic leaders in our syndicate hall, and we got a green signal just two weeks before the lockdown. We have created the video a video tutorial step by step manual, and all of those have been distributed among all our faculty members quickly. In the Okay, so now we have one week left for the lockdown. Having a Google email account is crucial for the G Suite. Many faculty members and many students, they, they did not have the NSU provided email address yet, but the lockdown is really imminent. An online form has been really developed very quickly to capture and to consolidate faculty and the student request email online. 
SMS messages have been blasted to all to use this form. This is actually an online form that asking for help or asking for email requests. Since we know there are thousands of faculties and, and our students do not have an email ID and the email ID is really the crucial. We have developed more video tutorials, fixed issues of the earlier tutorials for, uh, uh, with the faculty request. The tutorials and the manuals seem to be really shaping well in the, in the last week, by the way. Live demo, this is very important actually, the live demo for our faculty members have been really arranged in, in the last week in Audi at zero one in our auditorium. Our faculty members, they are really gracious enough to, to join the demo and the live session. And it was divided into slots for the entire day. And it was really a crucial moment for us to really get it uh, get our faculty on board it. So, so now the lockdown begins. It's March 16, 2020. So thousands of faculty and the students are yet to be onboarded, but the lockdown begins. NSU is absolutely ready technically, but bringing all 26,000 personnel, students, faculty, and in some cases, actually our, uh, our official staff on board when everything is locked at home is a mammoth task indeed. An online form has been again distributed to all, to all our faculty members who are needing or, or who could need some sort of assistance. All IT technical managers are brought in the front line and were tasked to start assisting faculty members. We really brought fast actually the IT managers so that they can really assist our, um, our faculty members firsthand. IT managers are responsible to call each and every faculty in need and solve the issue. IT managers are responsible for responding to the avalanche of email and phone calls in the shortest possible path or time. And issue, but an issue decided to start the online class two weeks after the lockdown begins. The lockdown begins, continued, it's a race against the time, and there are new challenges in the lockdown for, to support, actually. IT associates created around 13,000 email in 10 days for both faculty and for the students. It was a fight tooth and nail. The idea of bringing some faculty members on site, we try to really bring some faculty members on time, actually on site, for training that have been really abandoned later on because the COVID-19 fever has gripped the entire nation to a standstill. IT managers use cell phone, remotes, remote desktop, team waiver to reach and train our faculty members days and nights. IT associates have been sent even to the faculty members' homes sometimes as there are no other option left to fix the issues that they are facing. Now the online class begins. So actually I would say this is the March the 29th, 2020. That's the time actually online start, actually NEC started their first online effort or class at this, actually at this date. We thought that no other university in this country did it at the time or yet. And we believe that we are the first to really start, try it. Surviving the first week, Actually, the first week was very positive, by the way, even though there are hundreds of emails from the students and from the faculty members alike. The class participant rate was around 82%. Few days later, the average participation was around 93%. Some classes even enjoyed 100% participation rate. But again, we have really encountered lots of problems. Timely distribution of the Google code. Actually, the Google Classroom actually is a is a actually small kind of an LMS. And there is the class code that, that each and every faculty needs to distribute, even though we had the manual, but there are some, some issues with the, uh, with the class code distribution. Our student cannot join the class because of the permission denied. Uh, the faculty and the students are using Gmail instead of any actually email causing the biggest pain. And new email and email password issues are still lingering there. 
device and platform issues are also actually a problem because there are many faculties, many students, there are multitudes of plat platforms, multitudes of systems and the browsers were also not helping at all. Finally, they were, there were dedicated IT team handling these queries as fast as they come, 24 by seven. Security issue with the Google Meet here. Google Meet has really seen some qualitative improvements lately, but it, but it was not as good as, as one would, would hope for in the beginning of the pandemic. It had some limits. Clearly, it does not have as much control as Zoom has. Actually, I am delighted that my previous speaker was talking about Zoom, LMS, and Canvas, which I can really read everything what I am saying now. Um, there were some reported intrusion and subsequent tracking issue actually in the Google Meet. Actually, I would say there are some class recording issue. Student joining before the faculty, uh, uh, faculty in the classroom, that is also a big issue. Great view issue where faculty can really uh, see only 16 or less students, whereas actually in our class there are 35, 40, or 45 students. Well, we have really uh, uh, talked and really in touch with support engineer in Google, and they have they have given us the world plus support, and all issues have been resolved. Okay, so now actually we're coming back to a different parties online exam and proctoring. I would say the NSU is successful to a large extent uh, uh, in our taking class online, but we are severely handicapped for the lack of credible and dependable online exam and proctoring system. Uh, NSU actually mandated a dedicated team to assess the best online exam and proctoring system the money can buy. The moment we understand that the Google Meet or the Google Classroom is not capable enough to handle online class and the proctoring, then the university authority really actually have all the academic leaders together. We are really mandated to really find for a new online exam and proctoring system. Most of the proctoring system solutions works best with the LMS and Canvas as the most supported by all frontline exam management and the proctoring system. We have seen dozens of exam management system, dozens of proctoring system, and we have seen they all support Canvas very much, very well. Interoperability of Canvas, along with intuitive nature, intuition, were some of the most crucial factors to choose, to, to choose Canvas among many contenders. We had actually we have gone through like six or seven world class LMS, world class actually things, and we have choose Canvas because of these this thing that we believe. Canvas is really the undisputed global leader on, L, uh, on LMS space and NSV is the first to, to introduce it in, um, in the subcontinent. Exam and proctoric system continues still. Introducing Canvas will certainly pave the way to adopt world-class proctoring and exam solution. AI-based exam and proctoring system can go a long way to remove all current online exam limitations and impediments that the online exam have. NSU is looking for a time. We are really looking for a time when our faculty members will trust online exam more than the offline in-person exam. And I'm going to actually say, uh, uh, tell it why. Just imagine when a pair of robotic eye camera is always tracking and checking every move of the student, making, uh, uh, making the student almost impossible to take any unfair means. Two pair of eyes in front of your laptop and why not actually it is deciding based on your, based on AI, artificial intelligence, the student cannot do anything. Think, a mo think for a moment, a student may find some weak spots and may find a way to deceive the faculty in the classroom. But when a camera is tracking a student, it's almost impossible to do any suspicious activity. This can be termed as a no scape zone, by the way. So if you have a pair of eyes, a robot is really tracking and the every mode 360 degree angle, there is no way, there is no way to hide. So what is next? 
online class with credible exam and proctoring are going to usher, usher a new era for educational institutions. The geographical and political boundaries are no longer an impediment for receiving a quality education now. Early and sensible adoption of these groundbreaking concepts will put an issue ahead of its many competitors. With the introduction of Canvas and world-class proctoring, NSU is really poised to attract world-class educators and students around the globe. It would be a source of immense pleasure and satisfaction when NSU students will be enrolled in a class where faculty will be teaching from MIT, from Harvard, from Columbia. It, it's just a reality now. It's just a matter of time when the students from Yemen, from Somalia, from Nepal, and from many other countries do not need to set their feet in campus, mostly to learn or to earn an ECU degree online. An class, uh, classrooms are now being modified to build the capacity for remote and hybrid teaching and learning and to get prepared for the next decades. It is possible that we may end up seeing faculty taking classes simultaneously across the globe and students will feel the very presence of the faculty in front of the class by virtue of hologram, by the way. By using augmented and virtual reality, faculty may see all students across the globe sitting in one single classroom, wiping up the greed what we are seeing currently in the online class. A faculty, the students do not need to see the grid anymore. The grid will be gone. It will be really a one singular, contagious, one single classroom. We strongly believe that the NSU has the capacity and conviction to meet the challenges of the next decades by being the pioneer in introducing cutting edge technologies to meet educational needs. Our appreciation, by the way, top management, actually, uh, NSU top leaders understood the, the issues very early and were on board with the recommendations on online class. It's their trust and confidence, which were the key factors to motivate and to mobilize the, the personnel around. Faculty, our faculty give their maximum to get accustomed with the new system during the pandemic. Their willingness to learn and their conviction to the cause have inspired everybody around. Thank you. Our students, our students remain steadfast and was relentless in pursuing their needs. And most importantly, they kept their confidence despite having device issue, browser issue, version issue, internet issue, electricity issue, or even in some cases, they don't have any PC at home. Thank you again. IT. IT's dedication, commitment from, uh, from the IT managers and from associates were instrumental in delivering the solution and onboarding and onboarding the sea of faculty members and students. Without their unwavering support, nothing would have been possible again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mahabub, for giving us your uh, you know, experience uh, sharing with us and also talking about the challenges, how you have been able to overcome all these challenges uh, while you were actually being able to introduce uh, you know, online classes from uh, you know, NSU perspective. I'm, uh, because of our time shortage, I'm going to go to the next speaker, Mr. Mohammad Numanullah Bahar, who is actually the president of HDG uh, Youth Forum. Uh, Numanullah Bahar uh, and also the next speaker, actually, they both, uh, the young speakers, they are going to actually talk about from the other side of the, uh, you know, side, because the Muhammad Taurit and also Mr. Mahabub, they have been actually talking about from the service delivery point of view, but Numan and also the next speaker, uh, Haseen, they are going to look towards the, from the receptive side. Uh, Numan has been actually working with the SDG goals heavily uh, over the period of time. And he's going to actually present, uh, you know, today on bridging the digital divide for SDG 4. I would request Mr. Numan to present and also try to relate that, well, how this pandemic is actually causing in regards to the uh, service delivery 
that we have focus on education sector to ensure inclusive and equitable uh, you know quality education and also to promote the lifelong lear learning being a student and being you know from the student point of view from those who are th those who are taking the services we have been observing that there are clearly digital divide there are digital uh, device dependency and how that we can actually resolve those issues and your your points on those issues thank you very much mr nomanul labak um, good afternoon honorable chair vice discussants and dear participants at first, I would like to thank South Asian Institute of Policy and Governance, SIPG of North South University, Dhaka, for arranging two-day long national seminar on accelerating progress and equity in education during the pandemic in Bangladesh. Accordingly, today's session had in new actors in education. Under this topic, I would like to speak on the segment busy uh, in the digital divide for SDG4. Actually, it is a big and contemporary issue on the way of realizing sustainable development goal four, which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Uh, the world has been experiencing more changes in the last 700 days than in the previous 7,000 days. The prevailing pandemic has revealed new realities. Consequently, the pandemic has lessened physically face-to-face -face interactions and made digital ways inevitable. In this pandemic period, like the other parts of the world, Bangladeshi young learners are the worst sufferers. Even a few days ago, educational institutions of Bangladesh remained closed for about 1.5 years. In this gap, digital learning system took its place. Yet young people of Bangladesh are now finding it difficult to continue their education due to the digital divide. We must overcome this situation and bridge the divide. Uh, let's have a look on a major divide in Bangladesh. A major uh, reasons of digital divide in Bangladesh. First of all, comes poverty. And then lack of knowledge and skill in ICT. Deficit in ICT infrastructure. Lack of digital device. Gap of service of the internet service providers. Traditional mindset. Platform problem like Google Classroom, Google Meet, Wikipedia, Khan Academy, etc. High rate of data and slow speed of net. Too much availability of porn sites or contents, gaming programs or contents. Now let us find out why it is uh, important to eliminate digital divisions. Firstly, to eliminate severe social disparities, to unveil the realm of knowledge to all, to make people enjoy human rights, to remove the loneliness of elderly people, to raise awareness, to uh, spread distance learning, to organize learning activities and quality education, to enhance the scope of solving unemployment problem. Now, I would like to speak on the digital divide and the context of youth in Bangladesh. COVID-19 crisis enhances digital culture and communication practices, but policy debates are inadequate. Except only a few universities, millions of students remain disconnected or isolated. Only a few schools provide online classes most institutes do not have uh, digitally equipped education facilities. According to the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, BBS, in 2019, only 5.6% of households had a home computer and only 37.6% of households had access to the internet at home. 
Although the government has, has already set up multimedia classrooms in over 50,000 schools around the country, a large number of schools in the Chattogram, Hiltats, Haur, and Chaur area remain out of uh, coverage due to the scarcity of energy. Bangladesh faces the worst gender gap in computer and internet use. 62% of women are less likely to use the uh, internet and 34% uh, less likely to own a mobile phone than men. Here I am showing a survey report in the shape of graph and chart on reasons behind not using internet. Reasons for not using the internet multiple selection. Actually, actually, the impact of digital divide is not same in all places, in all gender, all age groups, and in all educational stages. Here is a chart on digital divide regarding location, gender, age group, and educational qualification. In urban area, internet user is 54.8%. And non user is 45.2%. On the other hand, in rural area, user is 34.8%, and non user is 65.2%. In this way, we can see that the people who are higher study, who are in higher study, use internet in the highest rate. It is 89.5%. So at this stage, we can suggest some ways for busing the digital divide. These are alleviation of severe poverty, increasing youth literacy, mindset change, improving the service of internet service providers, providing devices to the underprivileged, training for teachers and students, recognition of ICT degrees, developing telecommunication infrastructure, providing incentive for shrinking digital divide, availability of quality internet service. Less lessening cost of free data for learners, equipping with software and adaptive technology for the special need people, encouraging the establishment of cyber community, establishing cyber network and uninterrupted electricity in rural Haur, Chor, and hilly areas, revising online education curriculum in Bangladesh and gearing towards practical sessions and applied learning. Despite digital divide, I would like to mention some success stories of the youth in Bangladesh. By outsourcing and e-commerce, the young entrepreneurs have already made an outstanding performance in various fields of Bangladesh, they have become self-employed and job providers. Voluntary organization OBET Helpers and SDG Youth Forum have been working in many districts of Bangladesh. The young volunteers have been working with ICT education skill and empowering the digitally underprivileged youth successfully of the slum areas where acute digital divide exists. At the end of my presentation, I hope that the existing digital divide would be narrowed or removed or removed in Bangladesh within the stipulated time, and we would be able to realize 2030 agenda successfully. Best wishes for all listening to me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nomanullah. Um, um, uh, your, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, thoughtful and thought-provoking uh, presentations on digital divide. I would like to welcome our next speaker, Mr. Hassin Shahid Shad. Hassin Shahid Shad is one of our students from CSC department, and he is going to give a student's perspective on the role of IT and mobile hardware for online education. Hassin, uh, please go ahead. 
Sure. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. This is Hassan Shahid Shah. Currently, I'm studying computer science and engineering at North South University. Besides my uh, study, I'm also working as an undergraduate teaching assistant at North South University. So I'll be sharing some of my perspective as well as experience regarding online education today. Nelson Mandela once said that education is the most powerful weapon in this world. I also believe in this. Our education has switched to online because of the recent changes brought by this pandemic. Our students' view or perception is also changing. So today I'm going to share some of them with all of you. You may ask, does online education matter? Yes, it does. According to SDG4, we all need to ensure a free and quality education for the both girls and boys. Also, we need to eliminate the gender disparities in education. But 10 million additional girls are at the risk in child marriage all over the world, which was recently shown by our research conducted by UNICEF. Bangladesh is not an exception. Here, uh, we can uh, see the steady and sharp rise of child marriages in Bangladesh. Concerns about joblessness, uh, parental anxiety, traditional mindsets, and uh, poverty, food shortages, everything is actually uh, leading the parents or uh, the guardians uh, to give their uh, children to be married, which is really unfortunate. Not only girls, but also boys are sufferers in the rural area of Bangladesh. Uh, for instance, there are a lot of students uh, who had to cut off their study and they're currently working in fields or doing any other odd jobs. This is really unfortunate for us. But in the online education, there's a significant role of IT. First of all, because of the enhancement of the uh, technology, we can now have a quality education uh, remotely. And there are a lot of resources available online, so we can implement them and uh, use them however we want. And ebook readers have made our lives easier. Also, we can pursue higher studies uh, remotely. For instance, we can uh, pursue our MSc or PhD uh, from any foreign reputed universities at a very affordable cost. Also, the rise of edutech like 10 minute school uh, have opened a lot of doors for many students. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, primary, tertiary, and secondary uh, level students are getting uh, facilitated by the rise of these edutechs. Also, there is an opportunity to attend many competitions where we can show our latent talent as well as we can uh, also uh, compete with the international applicants or, or international participants. Development of LMS is another blessing for us. Before this pandemic, uh, during the normal time, we used to face a lot of challenges. For instance, lack of individual attention. In our traditional classroom, uh, there, there were a lot of students and our faculty member or our teachers uh, had to manage everyone, but it was quite tough to uh, uh, observe every single person or treat everyone equally. Because of the lack of the individual attention, there were many students who used to fall behind. And uh, also all of our home is not just adjacent to our educational institution. So we had to commute for a long time. This was time consuming as well as not cost effective at all which is also related to my next point, cost. Due to higher maintenance fee, we had to give a higher amount of money to our educational institutions. Also polluted air. Air pollution basically discouraged uh, many of our parents as well as our teachers to uh, join our uh, educational institutions. Also there are many diseases like dengue, uh, malaria, which are uh, really a matter of concern. Now I'm moving towards the recent obstacles of online classes due to this pandemic. First thing that I, want, I would like to uh, mention, this is anxiety. During the online semesters, the uh, amount of anxiety and panic attack or anxiety disorder is increasing among the uh, 
students do uh, nowadays our question uh, or the difficulty level of our questions are uh, higher than ever before also some faculty members are taking um, open book exams which is uh, definitely difficult for many students uh, and we are getting less time we, we also have to scan our script and upload it on uh, specific um, classrooms or our LMS. So uh, our, the amount of our uh, panic attack or uh, anxiety disorder is definitely uh, increasing uh, during the online semester. Also, the cost of hardware is another barrier. For many students, as I have earlier mentioned, we at least need a smartphone or smart device like laptop or computer desktop uh, for uh, attending online classes. But uh, this is not feasible for every single person. There, there are a lot of students in the rural area who are facing troubles uh, because of this issue. This is also connected with my next point, infrastructural barriers. Uh, during the online class semesters, we need to uh, transmit audio as well as video uh, in Google Classroom or Zoom. So we need more data. And in the rural areas, Wi-Fi or uh, broadband internet is often not uh, available. So uh, the students may need to uh, depend on the data and the data is not always way too cheap. So this is definitely uh, tough for them to uh, join online classes or continue their education seamlessly. After uh, electricity is another issue due to power outages or electricity cutoff, there are a lot of students who are facing a lot of issues. For instance, they cannot submit their scripts on time or sometimes they uh, cannot participate in their class or uh, like they cannot answer anything while their faculty is uh, asking them. And no campus. Campus is basically known as the uh, cultural hub for the students. And uh, this unique ecosystem is uh, destroying because of this pandemic. Uh, here in online semester, many of us have no friend. And this is actually leading us towards depression. There are also uh, no lab exams during the pandemic, uh, and many of us are stuck just for a single lab. This is very unfortunate. But the best thing is our university. North South University has taken initiatives just a few weeks after the education uh, facilities were closed. Initially, our faculty members started taking our classes through Google Meet or Zoom. Hence, our faculty members started giving a uh, pre-recorded lecture and uh, during the class time, uh, they had a question and answer session. Uh, and uh, some of our faculty members uh, have followed it. And uh, this was an amazing approach. Also, um, uh, the faculty members uh, at North South University used to take, class, uh, uh, take exams on Google Classroom. But we are uh, really fortunate enough that with the uh, revolution of the IT, uh, we are going to launch our very own learning management system, Canvas, uh, in a very short period of time, which is really a blessing for all the students and, and faculty members at North South University. So now I'll be talking about uh, future of IT in online education. Uh, the goal of future uh, should be education for all and no disparity. There are a lot of special children with autism or uh, visual impairments uh, who are unable to uh, do classes most of the time. And uh, online education may be a blessing for most of them. And also there are um, transgender people who are uh, really uh, enthusiastic to learn, but uh, because of uh, social uh, fear or inferiority complexion, they cannot join physical education. So this is uh, feasible for them as well. Uh, secondly, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence may help the faculty members to check their scripts and they, this may uh, save their time and uh, they may focus on research and development more. Uh, then I would like to mention about more individual platforms like Canvas where we can customize our um, uh, education system. And uh, here our faculty members can uh, 
detect cheating basically with the help of computer vision as well as AI technology. Uh, for instance, by facial recognition or eye detection, uh, our faculty member can easily uh, detect who is cheating in uh, exam and uh, whatsoever. Uh, uh, Lastly, I would like to uh, mention uh, activity-based learning in edutech. Uh, there are a lot of edutech, and the number of edutechs may be higher in number number in future. Um, and they should focus on activity-based learning uh, rather than only memorizing theories. As you all know, we are moving towards digital Bangladesh, and the concept of traditional education has changed radically over the past few months, past few months. and uh, being uh, physically present in the, uh, uh, in the universities or schools or, or colleges is, is not only the uh, learning option nowadays, and this is going to be changed very soon, uh, that almost all our classes will be held uh, online, no matter uh, if the pandemic uh, is over or not, uh, not. and uh, by overcoming, there are some challenges, by overcoming all the challenges, we are now uh, entering a new era, the revolution of online education. So we need to ensure that uh, beside our uh, learning, uh, beside our learning, we need, uh, we uh, gather some hands-on experience because at the end of the day, skill matters. And I also believe that, uh, our only schooling may uh, give us the certificate, but skill give us uh, skills give us the uh, employment. So we need to focus on skills to uh, moving forward uh, our digital Bangladesh. And without the help of IT sector, we will not be able to transform our country into digital Bangladesh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, everyone who is present here as well. And I would like to thanks. Um, NSU SIPG as well as uh, Dr. Mahfuzul Haq sir and Taufik sir as well. Thank you. Sorry, thank you very much Haseen and we are at the very end of our session and we are running out of time but I, I should ask uh, in the audience if you have any question to uh, specific to a specific uh, you know speaker please raise your question or hand raised okay. Uh, I, I see that well uh, Megha uh, Sarma has a question. Uh, could you please? Um, uh, Professor, Professor Tanvi raised his hand. Yes. With just observation. Let let Mega come first, and then. We'll talk. Thank you, sir. Okay. I have a question for Hasin or Shad. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, your name. Just sure. want to ask you something. Uh, one of the observations which we had from other students in other countries is that uh, sitting and doing online education, you're not taught any life skill. The only skill you are taught is that to sit in front of a computer, and then that's all you learn. Do you yeah. also feel that? And do you think that the university or educational institute should do something? Uh, this is something which other students from other countries are facing. And I want to know from you as a student, do you think that, you know, what you have said is extremely uh, nice to hear, encouraging, and it's really good. But how do you see your education institute is trying to get you to teach to teach you different skills which are necessary for the real world because the real world doesn't operate with just a computer and thing so i would like to know from you on that thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, yeah so uh, i would also request you to uh, you know take out sure. your uh, share screen option sure yeah okay and uh, please answer the question if you have any remarks on it uh, I believe that uh, all the faculty members are not the same. And uh, yes, we are definitely getting some hands-on experience, especially in our public speaking courses or CSE based courses. But in, in a few courses like Tripoli based courses, we are not getting hands-on experience, which is uh, uh, really uh, needed for many of us, but uh, we're getting deprived of that. Uh, otherwise, yes, we are getting hands-on experience sometimes in some courses, but yes, uh, all the faculty members are not the same. Uh, some of the faculty members are giving us uh, tasks uh, which are very related to our uh, real life-based uh, work, and uh, some faculty members are uh, giving us more uh, assignments where we need to uh, write pages after pages. So that was my, uh, my answer. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, anybody else? Uh, I think Professor uh, you know, Tanbir Khan, uh, Muni, he wants yeah, to just make some remarks make some, on it. Yeah. 
want to make some observation. Uh, it's been a very interesting it. one. Yes, I'll share it. And yes, Sha Shad, you, Shad, you can take out your share. It. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Professor Tanika. Yeah. Uh, it's been a very interesting one hour with a variety of perspectives of different age groups. Yesterday, I was confronted by an educationist and I told him that of the 107 universities private sector, you do not lump all of those universities into a homogeneous group. You know? There are 10 at least who have come of age and what we have decided and discussed today is a uh, outcome of that. Come pandemic, I think the challenge became extremely tough and what could not be achieved to go virtual during normal times, it became something by default. And among many positive things that MSU has done, it's uh, provided the online uh, teaching platform and Canvas is one of those things which have come to North South and probably that's uh, one thing unique that uh, North South has done. The question that the lady uh, was observing is that uh, with virtual education, the things that we talked about in during normal times is the skills. Now, as Shah said, you can't do labs through virtual uh, board you have to have a hands-on experience. And the skills that uh, needs to be uh, encountered has to be done in person. But uh, what uh, our friend Mabu was saying is that instead of the grid pattern, is you could have the full uh, screen with a classroom uh, uh, image, uh, that, that would help, of course. But I don't think there's a substitute of uh, in-person education. Uh, with virtual. Uh, so we have to uh, uh, improvise a lot of new things. Uh, thank which, you, thank uh, you for your comment. As we, as we are. So we have uh, less time. We'll have to go for the closing session. So yes. it's been a wonderful, wonderful discussion. All right, so then. Far. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Tanvir Khan, for actually making a very good point of uh, you know your your thoughts are also very good. Uh, at the we are very we are at the very end of our session actually. I must thank all the speakers, particularly uh, Mr. Taurit, um, you know, from the CEO of BDN for covering up that well how during this pandemic that CBDN has been able to provide services from the country perspective. That overall, from the country point of view, that BDN has been able to give very good services to accommodate academic institutions to disseminate knowledge through technology. And uh, you have done a wonderful uh, you know, job from DDN parts. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Mahabub, uh, the IT director. He has given the institutional perspective, the uh, challenges that university like North South, institution like North South has observed uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic and how uh, we have been able to overcome and what are the challenges and eventually been able to even introduce a world-based learning management system canvas in our campus. And uh, he was also very good in terms of uh, giving all sort of his experiences. And then uh, the other speakers like, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, the student, uh, our student Shad, Shad has actually been able to give uh, the perspective from the student's point of view. He has actually talked about the IT role, uh, you know, role of IT and what is his experience. Uh, Mr. Nomanullah Bahar also talked about heavily on digital divide. I would agree on many things that well, he has given in terms of the data or information that how country has been actually uh, segregated and also uh, divided in terms of the digital divide and also uh, digital, uh, you know, div uh, you know, device dependency. I think Mega raised a very good question that whether we have been uh, we have been able to. Uh, give proper skills in the distance classroom, uh, that is what is actually not going to be possible during uh, this kind of uh, distance mode. So finally, if I may, you know, may conclude the session, I would like to say that, well, due to, due to the prolonged, you know, pandemic worldwide, uh, one can be, you know, or it can be argued that the adoption of online distance learning 
will persist even after the pandemic. Uh, that is for uh, sure. And this has become a new uh, normal for all of us and a new blended hybrid uh, learning model of education is expected to emerge as a, as a future medium of classroom instructions. So blended learning is the thoughtful synthesis of offline and online learning experiences which integrate uh, you know, technology and online learning materials with traditional offline classroom activities. And today uh, in this session, we have got some of the very vital key actors, uh, those who have been able to evolve during this pandemic. And we have uh, got a very good session by getting their inputs. And I'm sure that well from here, we're going to gain uh, some knowledge and we are going to also take it further for implementing things in our institutions. Once again, thank you very much SIPG for organizing such a wonderful session uh, in these two days long of uh, session that is going on uh, at North South University. I must thank again and again, Conrad Edinier Stifting, uh, Stiftung from Germany who has been able, you know, the institution has actually been able to initiate this uh, participation with SIPG. Thank you very much, uh, all of you for being with, uh, you know, being with us for a long period of time. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.